Welcome to Worship with the Universalist Unitarian Church of Peoria. My name is Reverend Jennifer Innes, and it is my pleasure to serve as the minister with this beloved community. And we serve together as a congregation, as members and friends, children and youth, in all times of our life, in sickness and in health, in joy and in the struggle, and all across the seasons. We know so much is broken in us and in the world. We also inhabit this time and this place as we enter into winter beauty and savor the depths of night and pause in awe of the stars shining bright. So much is true all at once. Gathering in this time reminds us that we are not alone. We are companions, however we enter, however we gather. We are companions in the face of adversity and in the enduring presence of hope. Welcome. It is good to be together. As we come together for worship, we are mindful of the many people who have traveled before us. We recognize and honor the Peoria people who created their lives on these lands long before we were here. In this congregation, in all of its forms, in all of its ministries, this congregation is sustained by the care and talent and generous gifts of the members and friends. If you would like to make a financial gift, see the link in the chat or the slide at the end of the service. And if you are new to this congregation, I invite you to help us get to know you. At the end of the service will be a link for our shared coffee hour, and all are invited to the conversation. Uh, and this will be on Zoom. Please send a note to the church office to learn more about this beloved community. Now I have a couple of special announcements for our upcoming services. Uh, first, at 4.30 p.m. today, December 20th, Amy Pop, a credentialed religious educator, will lead a winter solstice gathering on Zoom. The link went out in the weekly email on Friday, and if you are new to the congregation, make a note in the chat if you would like to see the link for yourself. And, and some of us have been waiting all year for Christmas to be coming, and it's finally here. Our Christmas service will be at 7 p.m. on December 24th. Look for us wherever we post our worship, uh, on our website, on YouTube, and on Facebook. This year's service features the lessons and carols that we often enjoy, along with music from Emily Holmes Hicks and additional music from many Unitarian Universalist sources. You are also invited to have a candle of some kind near you to join in for Silent Night at the end of worship. Look for the order of service in this week's All Church email. We have a special guest for worship on December 27th. It is my pleasure to let you know that Gary Moore, who is a local Peoria uh, celebrity, will share a celebration of Kwanzaa and African culture through his stories and his wit and his music. I hope you will join us. And I need to say a note about our music for today's service. Our hymns come from several Unitarian Universalist sources. Thank you to Community Church Unitarian Universalist in New York for their production of For the Beauty of the Earth. And we have the gift of new music just offered in the last couple of weeks from the staff and volunteers at the Boise Unitarian Universalist Fellowship in Boise, Idaho. Their new song is Turning Toward the Light. And it was created by Carrie Bastian and Mike Lemieux. Uh, Robert Franklin created the video. And finally, we thank Christopher Watkins Lamb, who shares his musical and technical skill with a new version of Dark of Winter by Shelley Jackson Denham. And now, let us enter into worship. Oh 
morning's opening words are The Meaning of the Solstice by the Reverend Barbara Wells Ten Hove. The dark time has come. The earth in her great dance around the sun has come inevitably to the solstice, the time of extremes, of distance, of darkness and light. In our hemisphere, we experience this time as one of cold darkness, of shortening days and lengthening nights. The earth is tipping from our perspective further and further away from the sun. We wait, but the moment when the darkness is greatest is not entirely predictable. The spinning dance of the earth continues, but for one brief instant, when the axis of the earth's rotation crosses the line through the center of our orbit around the sun, the tipping stops. And for a moment, we seem to stand suspended in space, pulsing with potential movement and ongoing life. Then, like a child's top that almost fell over, we're saved by the spin and lifted up again towards the light. We bring our spinning, breathless, unpredictable lives to create a sacred moment of holding amid the whirling and the long, long nights. It is good to be in worship together. And this morning's chalice lighting is by the Reverend Lindsay Bates. To face the world's coldness, a chalice of warmth. To face the world's terrors, a chalice of courage. To face the world's turmoil, a chalice of peace. May its glow fill our spirits, our hearts, and our lives. Good morning. Today we are celebrating the upcoming winter solstice. So I thought it appropriate to tell you one of many traditional solstice stories. It is called The Rebirth of the Sun by Starhawk. Circle round and I'll tell you a story of how the sun was born again. It was the middle of winter and the sun had grown very old. All year long, the sun worked very hard, rising and setting each day. All year long, the sun had fed everybody on earth, shining and shining, giving energy to the trees and flowers and grasses so they could grow and feed the animals and birds and insects and people. All year, the sun's gravity held tight to the spinning ball of earth and the twirling ball of the moon and the eight other whirling planets as they traveled around and around and around until the poor sun was dizzy watching it all. Now, the poor sun could barely get up in the morning and after a very short time, needed to sleep again. So the days grew shorter and the nights grew longer until the day was so short, it was hardly worth getting up for. Night felt sorry for the sun. Come to my arms and rest, my child, she said. After all, I am your mother. You were born out of my darkness billions of years ago and you will return to me when all things end. Let me cradle you now, as I shelter every galaxy and star in the universe. So night wrapped her great arms around the sun, and the night was very long indeed. The children of the earth wondered why the dark went on so long, and if the sun would ever come back again. The old ones explained that the sun was very tired. They said that maybe though, if the children said thank you for all of the things the sun did for the people, the light may return in the morning. So the children sang songs to the sun. They thought about all the things the sun gave them. Thank you for growing the lettuces and the corn and the rice and the wheat they said, and thank you for growing the trees of the forests and the seaweed and the oceans and the krill that feeds the whales. Thank you for stirring the air and making winds that bring the rain. And every time a child said thank you, the sun began to feel a little warmer, a little brighter. Wrapped safely in the arms of night, the sun grew younger and younger. At last, the children had to go to bed. 
The old ones said that they would stay up and wait for the sun to rise again. Can't we stay up too? The children said. You can try, but you will get too sleepy, the old ones said. But you can each light a candle because all fire is a spark of the sun's fire. Put your candle in a very safe place and keep it and let it keep vigil for you as you sleep and dream of the sunrise. So the children lit their candles and put them in very safe places and each flame was a little spark of the sun's fire. And the sun peeped out from between the arms of night and saw all the little fires and began to feel warmer and brighter and younger still. Early in the morning, the old ones woke the children. Together, they climbed a high hill and faced to the east, the direction of sunrise. They sang songs to the sun and ran around trying to keep warm. They waited and waited to see what dawn would bring. The sky began to turn from black to indigo to blue. Slowly, the sky grew light. A golden glow crept over the horizon. Night opened her great arms and the sun came again in a burst, bright, new, strong, and shining. For in the long night, the sun had rested well and grown young from the songs and the thanks of the children, young as a brand new baby, born out of night once more. Everybody cheered and the children jumped up and down. The sun has returned, the sun is reborn, the children cried. And they danced and sang to celebrate the birth of a new day. And then they went home for breakfast. And as it was then, so it is still today. Happy solstice. We enter this time and this prayer and reflection to affirm that new light is ever waiting to break through to illumine our ways, that new truth is ever waiting to break forth to illumine our minds, and that new love is ever waiting to warm our hearts. May we be open to this light and to the rich possibilities it brings us, including and especially the care and compassion that comes with it. We begin our sharing of joys and sorrows with a moment of mourning. We offer our heartfelt sympathy to Stephen, Lindy, and Zach Peterson as they mourn the loss of their mother wife and mother, Darcy. Darcy died on December 16th. And now we move to healing. We offer our healing wishes to Jim Close, who is at home recovering from surgery. And now we enter into joy. We send our congratulations to Joe Lakota, who celebrates the birth of her great-grandson, Sage Lakota Edwards born to Skylar and Alicia Edwards on November 28th. Congratulations to the entire family. Among our neighbors and friends and children, there are other transitions and markers of life at this time. In particular, I'm aware of young people who are finishing school and applying for college. Blessings be upon them as they enter the next chapter of discernment about their future. Let us also hold before us the joy of seeing the first people to receive the vaccine against COVID-19. The path back to being together in person remains long, and every shot that is administered takes us that much further along that path. Let us keep in our hearts all who are involved with distribution and administration. And may we all continue to hold before us the safety and well-being of those in our lives and those in the larger community. 
Let us take one more moment together. There are so many joys and sorrows among us. There are a multitude of names and anniversaries and markers of life. May we have this moment to honor all that is on our hearts and remains unspoken. I invite you to take this moment with me. Amen. Our meditation reading today is A Blessing for the Dark by Laurel Gray. When the facade of your so-called worth crumbles, when you find yourself lost in the dark, I hope you take your time. I hope you listen for the sound of snow. Try to taste the sun as it casts sharp shadows over you. Remember, there is space here. Your body still knows how to breathe, how to heal, how to recall your wholeness. When the facade of your so-called worth crumbles, I hope you tell the truth about the wreckage, at least to yourself. And maybe, when the time comes, to someone else. I hope you dig deep enough into your faith that you find fertile ground under the rubble of what was never enough. That immaculate lie of conditional love, I hope you let it fall. For you have always had been made of star sparks and darkness of being held in balance, born of the very mystery of life. When the facade of your so-called worth crumbles, when you find yourself lost in the dark, I hope you let it wash over you. I hope you remember parts of yourself you didn't know were lost. I hope you welcome them home amidst the echoing silence in that still, open place. I hope you plant yourself beneath the rubble and wait for spring, for the lavender twilight to remind you of the peace you found in the dark. In this darkest hour, be still. In this darkest hour, be still and know. Be still and know the calling of your heart. Know a new dream soon will start. In this darkest hour, be still and feel the earth dance around our star and each star spiraling in space feel the still point at the center of it all as we spin with tranquil grace and the solstice candles gently glow and spark night. We wait in stillness in the dark, yet we're turning, turning toward the light. On this longest night be still, on this longest night be still and know still and know the journey may be long. Know that we will carry on on this
this longest night be still and feel the earth dance around our star and each star spiraling in space feel the still point at the center of it all as we spin with tranquil grace and the solstice candles gently glow and spark on this longest night we wait in stillness in the dark yet we're turning turning toward the light under the gleam of a winter moon we gather to sing a holy tune to join in the dance the dance of the spheres as we circle from year to year in this mystery be still in this mystery be still and know be still and know the peace that dwells inside know that joy and love abide in this mystery and feel the earth dance around our star and each star spiraling in space feel the still point at the center of it all as we spin with tranquil grace and the solstice candles gently glow and spark on this longest night we wait in stillness in the dark yet we're turning turning toward the One of my favorite hymns is, O Holy Night. I love that first verse and refrain in particular. And in my mind, I hear the great operatic voice of Luciano Pavarotti. I don't have that voice, but I'll offer the verse. O Holy Night, the stars are brightly shining. It is the night of our dear Savior's birth. Long lay the world in sin and air pining, till he appeared and the soul felt its worth, the thrill of hope. The weary world rejoices, for yonder breaks a new and glorious morn. Fall on your knees, O oh, hear the angels' voices. O oh, divine night, O oh, night when Christ was born, O oh, night, Divine, O oh night, when Christ was born. I love the imagery and the majesty of this song. I don't identify as Christian, but there is something about it. This quiet beginning and the naming of the beauty of the earth, even while recognizing the weariness of the world and the need a need for a powerful vision, an embodiment of hope. It is at night that this revelation appears and illumines everything. We are instructed, invited, practically commanded to fall on our knees. And it is an understandable response to power, to majesty, all the holiness, and to do so in our own 
humility. It is the power of night in this song, the darkness and the struggle of travel while being unable to see and to know what path to take. It is the power of night, inextricably linked with the cosmos and the glory of all that is, concentrated in a time of birth and the renewal of life. You know, this is one of those carols of intersection for me, um, because we are not only anticipating Christmas in this time. Here we are at the winter solstice and so many other holidays and holy days and embodiments of miracles. In solstice, we are in its own holy night as we celebrate this longest evening and watch and wait for the sun to return. In, in addition to the religious traditions that are around us, we encounter the stars as well, our earth and all that is around us. It happens that this year's convergence, uh, this year's Solstice is at a great convergence in the sky between Saturn and Jupiter, one that hasn't happened in about 800 years. Now, the longest night of solstice and uh, inspires so many science conversations and talking about the relationship between the Earth and the Sun, and that stirs our astronomical hearts, uh, as my colleague Barbara Tenhove offered in our opening words. But this event, this convergence, lets us enter into full geeky joy and rapture. Uh, I'll offer that the University of Illinois Springfield Observatory is hosting a virtual star party on December 21st. In fact, we can all nerd up together. So here we are at this intersection of myth and story, and science, and human instinct. Here we are navigating this relationship between the night and the light, whether that light is the sun, the stars, or a candle we create. And as we approach Christmas and the new year, keep in mind we are also in this last stretch of liminal time that began way back at about Halloween and All Souls Day. We have been in this moment of transition for months at this point. And so it's reasonable to come into these holidays and question the nature of our existence. This is what this time is kind of meant, ends up being meant to do. For us as humans, we're in this Venn diagram of myth and science and existential concern and wondering how we're going to survive. And those questions, this is part of our work in faith development. How might, I want to invite us, how might we look up from our screens and take in a bit more of the world, the cosmos, in fact. We have so many existential questions before us, and we have the universe around us as our location to ask and answer queries of survival and thriving and tomorrow and to find our place in space and time once again. Every year in Unitarian Universalist congregations, no matter how many times we, any of us have gone through December and all of the holidays and holy days, it is a new experience of sorting out the belief and the grief and the science and the singing and back again. This effort of navigating these times and these great questions, this is an essential part of our collective and individual experience. 
in a congregation, in a liberal tradition such as ours that wants to be open to wonder and direct experience, and open to what, is, tell, what science tells us, and open to the deep stories that we have been telling each other for centuries, for thousands of years. I also recognize, as part of our experience and encounter with this kind of time, these transitions, these cosmic questions, that every one of us comes to it from a different location. We each have our own personal histories, some of which are quite fraught and tragic and traumatic. And this year, this year, some of us are not celebrating at all. It truly doesn't feel like there is anything to celebrate. And I want to recognize the range of where we come to in this time. Part of what we get to do together, whether or not you reckon, celebrate a holiday, or a story, but we get to learn what is around us and before us, what people are talking about, what speaks to each other, what speaks to us. We get to learn our human stories, absorb them, model what we think is important and valuable for our neighbors, and then pass on those lessons to our children. These are part of us creating legacy, cultivating being ancestors, but it's also where we have a chance to learn more about ourselves, to pay attention to our emotional experience and those of others, and set the stage for what we can expect and what we want to see happen in the year or the years to come. So maybe you don't celebrate but I invite you to reflect. Sing if you need to, if you are one of those who really wants to be singing, or maybe just try it out a little bit if you're singing at home alone. Light a candle just for the act of adding a little light to the world, regardless of how long the actual flame lasts. What I want to do for right now is focus on the night and that question of why do we look at the sky in the first place? What draws us out to the stars and the evening and the perspective that is around us in that great dark dome? Scientist Neil deGrasse Tyson has some thoughts. He says, there is a fundamental reason why we look at the sky with wonder and longing. It's for the same reason we stand hour after hour gazing at the distant swell of an open ocean. There is something like ancient wisdom encoded and tucked away in our DNA that knows its point of origin as surely as a salmon knows its creek. Intellectually, we may not want to return there, but our genes know and long for their origins at home in the salty depths. But, he says, if the seas are our immediate source, the penultimate source is certainly the heavens. And he goes on. The spectacular truth is, and this is something that your DNA has known all along, the very atoms of your body, the iron and the calcium and the phosphorus and the carbon and nitrogen and oxygen and so on and so on, were initially forged out of long dead stars. This is why when you stand outside under a moonless country sky, you feel some ineffable tugging at your innards. We are star stuff. Keep looking.
Neil deGrasse Tyson reminds us that we are creatures of the galaxy, that we are embodiments of the stars in our modest frames. We're doing this all at once, being cosmic and mortal, everywhere and individual, all at once. We're, we're kind of embodying, if you like the, scientist, the science fiction character, Doctor Who, we're kind of embodying what, he, what they describe as the wibbly, wommy, wobbly, timey, wimey stuff, just by being here. What Degrassi Tyson describes is happening now and thousands of years ago and millions of years ago, all at the same time. This cosmic perspective is our spiritual practice here and now. Rainer Maria Rilke goes on with a poem for Solstice. He says, You darkness that I come from, I love you more than all the fires that fence in the world. For the fire makes a circle of light for everyone, and then no one learn outside learns of you. No one outside learns of you. But the darkness pulls in everything. It shapes and fires animals, and myself, how easily it gathers them, power and people, and it is possible a great energy is moving near me. I have faith in nights. This solstice moment is our moment for encountering the cosmos and all its implications for you and me. We are embodied stars on a holy night. And even as I say that, I know, and you know, it is not easy to be this star stuff in our mortal selves and soft hearts and minds and bodies. It is not easy to be here. In fact, it is such a struggle. It is no wonder that part of what the experience of these days and nights include is anxiety and fear. I don't know about you, but I, there are moments when I find the decorations, even a little star, are too much and too intense. You know, I already have, I don't know about you, but I already have a whole sensory overload in my anticipation and awe of the night at times. But this is the heart of the practice in, in Advent if you would, in the watchfulness of watching the night pass in the solstice of waiting and wishing and wondering. No matter how many years have gone by that have turned out to have the sun rise again or the new child born again, what if this year it isn't okay? What if this year this is not the child? What if this year the child does not come? It would be reasonable to have such questions because for many of us, 2020 is a year we would really truly rather leave behind. It is full to the brim of death and loss and sorrow. This is our moment of greatest doubt, collective, cosmic. Will we survive? Will it remain forever night, whether physically 
or systemically? Will the empire rule again and continue? In our watch and in the waiting, we can spend time with that discomfort and that concern. One of the great revelations of this year has been how so many people have been suffering so long in our economic and educational and social systems, in our, in, in our justice systems as well. This isn't new, but it's taken on new presence and truly embodiment in this year. We have legitimate and deep questions about what comes next. You know, one of the refrains I hear from my colleagues and other uh, progressive-minded folks is, the world normal for many people was really already not okay. What kind of new world do we actually want to have happen? And what are we willing to do to create it, not just for ourselves, but for everybody? It's almost, we're, we're slowly, I see people slowly start to imagine, slowly start those conversations, and then have to deal with the urgent and the immediate of family and of health and of work or of school or just simply surviving again. But when there's a little moment, we come back to that deep question, how shall we create and recreate the next year? How shall we locate ourselves in the cosmos going forward? How will we endure? We get to speak the truth in love about fear, about injustice, about confusion, and about our rage and deep anger at what has been and what any harm that we have known and understood, but not always known how to speak to it. We get to remember that we are powerful and precious and holy and not alone. So in that intersection of speaking the truth in love, relocating ourselves in the cosmos, and remembering that we have agency and presence, every one of us, that this star stuff can shine from within. That's part of that Venn diagram of encounter between science and myth and humanity. We can sing the songs of light in that encounter and of sing those songs of night to ourselves and to our children. Now I get to have the pleasure of, of that lesson again and again in our daily walks as a family. There are so many places. We're singing through the Christmas carols as we're walking and making alternate lyrics to them as well. Because there's so many places where I can be conscious and intentional about what to pass on, thoughtful about what I have carried, what has come into me, and what images of strength and resilience and empathy I would like and hope can establish and grow in the hearts of my children and in my heart as well. Even while living in deep doubt and perhaps using those existential questions as motivation to say what might happen next. Faith development this is faith development, this work, this encountering the holy, 
It is an act of faith, of hoping and believing. Not just that the day will come, but that we get to do something with that day as well. And remember our sacredness within the embrace of the nations and of the universe. Our survival, our ability to thrive, our location in the cosmic order comes together in this song by whose words are from the Reverend Jan Aldridge Canton. And she sings this to O Little Town of Bethlehem. Uh, she's a feminist liberation theologian and a Baptist minister. I want to offer the song as part of my closing. And it includes the image of Sophia, who was the embodiment of wisdom in the Greek Christian scriptures. And so I offer the song, O Holy Darkness, Loving Womb. So, O holy darkness, loving womb, who nurtures and creates, sustain us through the longest night with dreams of open gates. We move inside to mystery that in our center dwells, where streams of riches beauty flow from sacred living wells. Creative darkness, closest friend, you whisper in the night. You calm our fears as unknown paths surprise us with new sight. We marvel at your bounty, your gifts so full and free unfolding as you waken us to new reality. O holy night of deepest bliss, we celebrate your power. Infuse us with your energy that brings our seeds to flower. The voice out of the darkness excites our warmest zeal to bring together dark and light, true holiness reveal. O oh, come to us, Sophia, your image black and fair, stirs us to end injustice and the wounds of earth repair. The treasures of your darkness and riches of your grace Inspire us to fulfill our call, our sacredness embrace. We are doubtful, fearful, finite creatures within the entirely vast universe. Let us tell ourselves again the sacred stories that not only carry us through the night, but make it easier to linger and savor the dark that is around us and within us. We are flawed and fabulous keepers of the night and the light. May we take up our power and our call to mend the world at every season and in every hour. So may it be. And with our closing hymn, we return once more to the dark of night. Ya da da, ya da da da, ya da 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 da, ya da. Dark of winter, soft 
and still Your quiet calm surrounds me Let my thoughts go where they will Ease my mind profoundly And then my soul will sing a song A blessed song of love eternal Gentle darkness soft and still Bring your quiet to me Darkness soothe my weary eyes That I may see more clearly when my heart with sorrow cries comfort and caress me and then my soul may hear a voice a still small voice of love eternal darkness when my fears arise let your peace flow through me Darkness when my fears arise Let your peace flow through me We extinguish this flame, but not the light of truth, the warmth of community, or the fire of commitment these we carry in our hearts until we are together again. And now, between the dawn and the dusk of our being, let us be brave and loving. Amid the night and the light in which we live, let us declare a renewed hope. In our little passage through the night and the light, let us sustain and forward our human venture in gentleness and service and in love. Amen. Our worship is ended. Let our service begin.